Example two, area under curve using both left and right endpoints. Okay, so on example one, we only looked at the right endpoints. So making these Riemann sums is what we're gonna learn. It's called these blocks going from the right endpoint. And we add those up for the area. So this time my function has changed. So I'm gonna come over here and change my function. And we're gonna look at uh, x squared plus one. And I'm only gonna look from zero to four. So let me change this part here, zero to four. So Desmos is now showing me exactly kind of what we're looking at. It's this area. And first it says use the right endpoints, which means we want to make uh, little squares kind of going from the right of each unit. Here, let me zoom in. So maybe there we go. Well, I was trying to get the x-axis a little bit better, but where we'd have blocks of length or width one unit going from the right endpoint. And so I actually have that up here where you can see exactly what's happening. And so basically we're adding up these areas. So how would we go about doing that? Well, just like number one, the area of a box is always, uh, or a rectangle is length times width. So we want the width to be one on all of these and we're using the right endpoints. And so basically what I'm doing is taking the width of one, so that, or the base, and I'm gonna multiply it times the height. And the height is determined by taking the F. Now, if I want the right endpoint for this block, my right endpoints are going to be one, two, three, and four. So one times f of one, and then again a base width of one times the height of f of two, one times f of three, and one times f of four. Those are the values I'm going to add together. I'm going to sum together to get the exact area here. So if I go over my calculator, I can find out that this first width would be one times the height of f of one, which f of one is two. So as you can see over here, one times two is two. Oops, row in the wrong place, there you go, two. Uh, the next one would be one times the five here, which is five. And then we'd have a 10 and a 17. And if you added that up, you'd get the area in units squared. Two plus five is seven, plus 10 is 17, plus another 17 is 34. So this is 34 units squared. And by the way, if you remember from chapter 10, we learned about how to find the sum using the symbols, the sigma. And so the way you would work this is we were going from the right endpoints where the number's one to four, from one to four. And each time, what were we doing? We were multiplying one times F of whatever the N value is. And notice it gives us 34. Okay, so we did that one correctly. Now let's look at, and this is an overestimate on the area. Notice these blocks are larger than the actual area under the curve would be. Now let's take a look if we were looking at the left endpoints. So this time, instead of saying, I want this area, which we got to be two, this area, which was five, 10, and 17. If you didn't catch that, that's what these blocks are. That's the area. So like this block has an area of two units squared. This one is five units squared, this one's 10 units squared, and this was 17 units squared. Now let's look at it using left endpoints. So left endpoints would look a little bit different. Let me turn these off. There's no quick way of doing that other than clicking them all. And now let's look at the left endpoint. So now we're finding the area using left endpoints. Notice this is gonna be an underestimate of the area. It's not gonna include all the area. And so, what would happen is again, I would do base times height and we're doing a base width of one, but this time using the left endpoints, I would use the values zero, one, two, three. I'm not gonna use the four because that would be on the right side. I wanna use the left side here. So I'm using the numbers from one, uh, zero to three. So it'll be one times F of zero, one times F of one, one times F of two and one times F of three. Now you know why when I program this in, I use the numbers from zero to four because I would need one to four in the first problem. Now I'm gonna use one to three on part B here. And so the multiplication I already have done right here would be one, two, five, and 10. So the total area, I add this up, one plus two is three, plus five is eight, plus 10 is 18 units squared. The area here was one, area here is two, the area of this block was five, and the area of this block is 10. So this was an underestimate. This was an overestimate. Part C mentions that oftentimes people to try to get more accurate, if they know the left end, uh, left Riemann sum, and they know the right end Riemann sum, they might just average these together. Let me 
type it in the calculator to show you from zero to three, one times F of N. Notice we get it 18 this time. Okay, so if we wanted to have a more accurate representation, we could average the two because we know that this one, uh, the part A was too high. We know this one is an overestimate, it's too high. That's an overestimate, it is too high. Because the shaded H block is shaded above the curve. Uh, this answer here was an underestimate. It's too low. So more accurate would be to average the two together. If you take that 34 and you add it to 18 and divide by two, we get the average. This would be the average area. Let's just type this in the calculator, make sure we don't make it simple error. 34 plus 18 divided by two is 26. 26 units squared. Now this would be our uh, a better estimate. Now, why does it have to be better? Well, the first one we know for a fact was too high. The second one we knew was too low. So the average between must be more accurate than either one of the two, first two. So it's a better estimate uh, being somewhere in the middle of those two values. All right. Now, with that background knowledge, let's see if you can work out example two DOL. Pause the video. I'm sure you'll need to take a little time to find your answers.